What's up, everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news, and today's guest will be fighting this weekend at UFC 286 when he takes on Malcolm Gordon. Please today to once again be joined by Jack Hadley. Jack, nice to see you again, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, I can't complain. Thanks for asking. And let's get right into it, man. It's fight week. It's how you feel and how's the body and any nerves, excitement, the whole nine yards? Yeah, I feel good, man. I feel good. I'm obviously excited for Saturday and uh, no no nerves yet or nothing. So I feel good. I feel ready. I'll go down there tomorrow. So, yeah. And the fight's at the O2 Arena, so obviously, uh, you know, a big deal for you. Close travel and everything, about a three-hour uh, car ride, you said. So, you know, just how excited are you to get the fight in London at the O2? Yeah, well, um, it's been a long time since I fought in the UK. And, um, you know, I haven't fought in the UK since I was on Cage Warriors. And um, when I fought on Cage Warriors, you know, it was during the pandemic. So there was no crowd uh, during that. So I'm ha- I'm happy to fight in front of my hometown crowd for the first time, um, pretty much in my whole career, really. Um, you know, I've been fighting a lot abroad. Yeah, I had my first three fights local, but that was on a very small regional show. So, yeah, I can't wait to fight in front of uh, the UK uh, fans. And I know that uh, Michael Bisbing would often say, and I know Chael Sonnen backed them up on, on this or vice versa there. But anyway, the, pretty much the comment was, when you do fight at home like that, though, there are some pressures to it. There's a lot more media obligations. You got family, friends reaching out. A lot of people want tickets, everything else. Have you felt any of those pressures of fighting at, at home or none of that's there? It's just business as usual. No, not really. I, I just feel like it's business as usual. No more added pressure really than any other um fight you know there's always a lot of pressure in every fight because you got to win every fight so um no i don't feel no more added pressure um you know that it's in london at the o2 um if anything it just makes things a bit easier don't have to travel and stuff like that uh so yeah I said one of the things, too, that I guess uh, definitely going to be a a big thing in your advantage, too, on fight night is going to be just the fact that there's going to be a lot of the UK fans, obviously, in attendance. And I've been asking fighters, too, just about what the arena atmosphere is going to be like. And everybody's obviously expecting it, you know, very loud, a lot of different chants and everything. And it's mainly because the, the European fans, I mean, hands down, it seems like even people here in America will agree that the European fan base really is the best in the sport. I just want to get, you know, your take on that, if you agree with that take and what is it about the european fans that that make you know make the fight game like those iconic memories when you're in an arena just hearing all those different chants and everything yeah man i mean the you the european fans are uh you know you know are very loud and very you know they sell out the arena every time whatever have you but you know, it's a lot also probably to do with as well uh, that we don't have a lot of cards in the UK. Obviously, in America, you have a lot of cards there. So it's like, you know, and there's uh, fewer fighters in Europe who are in the UFC. So I think they really get behind them guys who are in the UFC um, or in major organizations. I think the fans really get behind them. Um And, it, and um, I feel like the UK are, are very... Um, you know, they've been waiting a long time to have a pay-per-view card and now we've got a pay-per-view card. So I think uh, everyone's excited for this card. I mean, it's um, full of UK fighters. Um, so I should imagine it's going to be pretty full from very early on. Um, you know, sold out very fast. So, yeah, expect it to be a good night. All right, man, let's get at a few now fight specifics here for you in this fight. Uh, let's start with travel, number one. Uh, I know we kind of touched a little bit on it earlier. Uh, obviously, you said three-hour car ride, and usually travel, right? When you fight abroad, it can be a pain, to say the least, right? There's visas you got to get. Uh, you're trying to cut weight while you have to take a long plane ride somewhere, adjusting to time zones. It can really be a lot for fighters when they have to make those big, long travels, usually over here to America. The fact that you don't have to do it this time, I mean, how, how nice is that, that all that stuff is completely out the window and now you don't have to worry about it? Yeah, man, it makes life a lot easier. Um, you know, um, training in my normal gym, going to bed in my bed, on a night, um, you know, 
not having to adjust to the time zone. He's going to be the one having to adjust to the time zone here. And uh, in actual fact, I don't know, um, you know, I've heard a lot of people say this, but I don't know how how true or how, how not true it is or, and, and if he's suffering from it or not. But usually when I fly over towards America or that way, I don't get the sort of jet lag as what I do when I come back. So I know he's from Canada. I don't know how far that is different, but I think he might suffer from that coming over here. So, you know, that's an added bonus onto, onto you know, my game and that. So, um, yeah, it's all, it's all in, you know, i got added benefits here, but, you know, most of the time it's been my opponent who's had that benefit on me. Um, so this is the first time I'm going to have the benefit on the opponent. All right, let's get into the opponent stuff now. Before we exactly get into him as an opponent, let's talk about your preparation for the fight here. Uh, training camp is obviously now wrapped up that it's fight week. Just how was your camp? Yeah, it's been a good, hard um, camp, training hard in my gym in Birmingham, fearless MMA. Um, you know, brought in my coaches. Um, we've been training specifically for him. I've had some good sparring. I've had some good um, training. I'm fit. I'm strong. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a good camp. It's been a good camp. All right, let's talk about him now a little bit. Just as an opponent, what have you seen out of him, out of him as you've been uh, preparing for him now for a few weeks? Um, I, I see. You know, he's a good fighter. He's the best fighter in Canada at the weight at flyweight. So. Um, you know, he's a uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu. Um, he, he's a former TKO world champion. Um, uh, he's, you know, scrappy and dangerous on the feet. Um, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's experienced. Um, the only people who have beat him have been top 15 ranked opponents. Um, he's coming off a um, a nice, not a night, uh, like more, it's coming off like a loss, but a loss where he proved a lot of people wrong, where he was supposed to get finished early by Makayev, but he didn't. He actually gave him an hard fight. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, uh, overall he's a good opponent, um, experienced, had 20 pro fights, 32 years age. You know, he's probably maybe might be starting his decline now, being that age as being a flyweight. But then again, he has looked, he's probably looked his best the last three fights. So I'm expecting the best Malcolm Gordon. I would say, with that being said, too, I mean, just how do you see this fight playing out? What do you say? Sorry? How do you see this fight playing out on fight night? Well, to be honest, I feel like, um, you know, I can knock him out or sub him. Out so um really anything I anything I choose and if anything I want to do really um you know I can finish him everywhere I've been training specifically stuff in the striking and in the in the jiu jitsu and the wrestling you know to finish him so um I, I'd I'd highly doubt that he, he'll be able to not get finished um one of the one of the knocks I would give on him is that um. He seems to crumble a little bit. Like you know, take um, you know, he's not like my last opponent who I broke his orbital bone and 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 then I half put him to sleep before he tapped. I think Gordon will tap a lot sooner. I think he will um quit through strikes a lot quicker. Um, so I definitely see see a finish. I'd be shocked if he goes through round. And if that's the case, right, you're going out there, you're looking for the finish, are you expecting to go home with a few extra bucks there, maybe a little performance of the night bonus in the cards here? Well, the, the you know, my last fight, if you watched it, was a, a very entertaining fight, pretty much in the pocket, trading shots. And then I finished the guy with the triangle and, and choked him out, and, and I didn't get a f bonus for that, so I was pretty shocked. Hopefully I'll get the bonus for this one, but the main thing I'm worried about is winning the fight. 
Gotcha, man. I understand there. Now let's uh, move on a little bit here to uh, the the later part of the evening at UFC 286 main event. I know you and Leon are uh, very close. Uh, Have you gotten to get a good look at him before this fight? Just how's he been looking as he prepares for this trilogy with Kamaru Usman? Yeah, he's been looking good. Obviously, we we share similar coach. uh, We share mutual coaches. Um, so he, he works in my wrestling coach, Camby, um, at Fearless, and uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, Bradley Hill, at Fearless, and um, my strength and conditioning coach, Johnny, at work. So, um, yeah, we share similar coaching and uh, coaches, so he's been in the gym around the same times as me or just after me. Uh, and, um, you know, he's been coming to the tr- – we've been going to the track together, doing sprints and – um, our cardio work and our, our conditioning work with our coach John. So, yeah, he's looking very fit, um, fit, strong. He's uh, ready to go. Um, yeah, I expect another win off him. I was going to say, too, and obviously you're expecting uh, a win here uh, for the trilogy with him there, but I did want to back up, though, to when he won the title. That was such a, a huge moment in the sport that's going to live on forever. It's always going to be a staple of UFC history, the way he was able to get that that head kick I often refer to as the head kick hurt around the world. Uh, what was your reaction like when you were watching that and you saw him win the title? Yeah, I mean, it was um, a crazy moment. Um you know, we, we all believed that Rocky was going to win, um, but to win in that fashion as in l- be losing the fight pretty much every round and come back and win was was truly a Rocky story. So, um, you know, we we know we, we know he has no quit in him and he's going to keep fighting till the end. Uh, you know, it was, a, you know, it was a, a bit of a shock when he did knock him out at the end of the fight. Um, but I expect a more dominant performance off Leon this time due to some factors uh, in in that last fight. I feel like he's a much more better fighter come um, this Saturday. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to see that fight. It's going to be a good one. A lot of fans, obviously, uh, cannot wait to see that either. I do want to ask you about Leon's brother, Fabian, though, for a moment, too. I know you obviously have a relationship with him as well, I'm sure. Uh, obviously, he's chasing down towards the Bellator title. Uh, just your thoughts on, on him and how his year's shaping up, and if you think he'll be holding that title sooner than later. Yeah, man, uh, um, Fabian, he, he's looking good. You know, he's he's, he's in the gym. He's, he's like um, a proper gym rat. He's always training. He never, he's never out of the gym. Um, he's always working hard, so he's always improving. Um, you know, I expect him to go on and become a better tour middleweight champion. I mean, um, you can't question his work effort, hard work. Hard work and talent gets you to the top. So, yeah, he's looking he's looking good. I don't think his camp started yet, though. But he ain't long got back from Thailand. He's been doing some training in Thailand. So, he's come back and um, I think he's um, slowly getting ready now to get into training camp. And the growth of MMA in the UK has been incredible. And there's been so many, obviously, great fighters over the years here now. And watching you now and watching Leon and Fabian and the the list goes on, a bunch of other UK fighters too. But who are some guys, though, maybe that haven't hit the scene yet that the fans aren't too familiar with that maybe they're in your gym or or people that you've worked with uh, just on the, the MMA scene around the country there that we should keep an eye out for? I mean, there's loads of guys. I mean, you could just name names, um, but most of them are, are in big organisations. I think the, um, you know, the names what guys wouldn't wouldn't have heard of, you know, like uh, my my training one of my training partners, Ryan Hewitt, is early early pro. He fights uh, the week after me on Cage Warriors. Um, you know, you've got many other guys up and coming. You know, especially in Birmingham. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's looking great. The future of MMA is looking great here in the UK and especially uh, Birmingham. 
All right, man, I just got one last thing before we wrap things up. So this is the second time that we're doing an interview together. And it's funny, every time I prep for an interview, no matter who I'm talking to, I always go to fighter social media accounts, just check them out a little bit. And it seems like you're always all business, man. Yeah, you have a lot of uh, photos, obviously, of training, all different things in the fight game, which obviously you would expect being that this is what you do for a living. But what do you like to do for fun, man? I'm sure there's got to be a fun side of you somewhere there. Do you like to do any, any hobbies or anything like that? I mean, I don't really have no hobbies. Um, I mean, what I could, could say is that I enjoy training. So, so it's obviously it's not a hobby for me. It's a, a, a life. It's my life, but I enjoy training. Um, the one thing I'd say, which you know, is probably a hobby, um, is going for food or something after training. I like I like to eat. You know what I mean? But that that's about it, mate. I don't have no hobbies or nothing. I just train. And that's all I do. What's the favorite food then? What do you like to eat? Probably, probably a burger. I'm fancying a burger right now. All right. Well, man, enjoy the burger after the fight. It's going to be well deserved. Uh, just last thing before you head out now for the evening. Uh, social media, so people know where to follow you at. You have any uh, management? I know you wear the paradigm hat right now, but any management sponsorships, things like that, you got to plug. Floor is yours. Yeah, man, I just want to um, say my Instagram and Twitter and TikTok, Jake had the MMA. Uh, Jake had me on Facebook. Obviously, shout out to my management, Paradigm, my manager, Dave, my, um, all my coaches and, 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 and all the people on Team Hadley.